Okay, game, I won't turn off my computer while the game is saving. <laughs> well, hello everyone and welcome to Castlevania, Lord of Shadow, Mirror of Fate. HD! Now you might be wondering, why the hell is there an HD on the subtitle there? Well, that is because... The game was first released for the Nintendo 3DS. Which uh, then had a little uh, porting over to its bigger home console brethren, as well as the PC, as the HD version. Of course, that means that since the game is uh, a 3DS port, it does bear the scars regarding its graphics of, the, uh, of its 3DS original version. You'll see the, um, well, the character, the character models and all that are not as, uh, neither as detailed nor as uh, well-rounded, or, uh, you know, it's their geometry, the geometry of the models isn't as high as the original Lords of Shadow. Despite that, it's, uh, it's a quite, an enjo quite an enjoyable game. If you ever wondered what would a uh, God of War game look like in 2D, well, here you have it. It's interesting because I think this is a game which, uh, I don't know, brought Mercury Steam to Nintendo's attention and uh, made Nintendo give Mercury Steam the, the, uh, the green light to create Metroid Samus Returns in 2017. I don't know. In any case, this game uh, takes place right after the end of uh, the second, the final DLC of the original Lords of Shadow. And we're here to see the events that uh, led to the beginning of Lords of Shadow number two. So, I won't bore you anymore. Let's get right into it. There will be no level or boss checkpoints, blah blah, yes. Eh, let's play on normal. Not for any particular reason, but because uh, I don't need... Uh, how, to, how to say... Damage sponge enemies. The game will be quite interesting to see and play, without the enemies needing 10 times more hits to die. Which makes for a better viewing experience. Okay, let's begin. mission begins. Gabriel is still a knight of the Brotherhood of Light, and we're here with our brothers to destroy the magic emanating, the foul magic emanating from that castle in the distance. If you wondered what, why that, uh, that thing passed right in front of the screen, uh, we'll have to remind you that uh, the 3DS had uh, stereoscopic 3D at its, at its main selling point, so gotta, we have to you know, show off that uh, depth perception.
Okay, here we have it. Same things. Direct attacks, area attacks, and jumps. Can't block until the game tells me to, of course. As you can see, yeah. It's pretty much a 2D version of uh, God of War, Lords of Shadow. There we go. Ouch, you little fucker. Oh. The Brotherhood Knights fell killed over with Oh crap. Just one blow. Looks like Gabriel is tough as nails. Can take things, hits like nobody's business. Look at him. Sorceries take place in there. We'll be finding out very soon. As you can see uh, from what I told you before, it's obvious that uh, the game still bears its uh, <laughs> its, scar its 3DS scars, you can say, with the uh, limited geometry on both the environment and on Gabriel's and the enemy's models. Not to mention the texture work, which is, even though it is better than what it was on the 3DS, it's still quite low for uh, HD and PC standards. But, as you can see, there's uh, much less in the way of particle effects and all that. Ah, but oh well, what can you do? Animations are also... Uh, ah, come on. I've also taken a step back, but I guess that is to be expected. Gotta start ah, getting better at the game because I'm gonna get my ass handed to me if I keep getting hit like this when I'm playing a normal game where I have an actual life bar. Oh. I've seen it, Marie. The mirror has shown you Gabriel's fate. You must protect the child from his father. Trevor and his lineage will be the only ones capable of facing him in the future. Your son's survival is the only hope for humanity. We will come for him at nightfall.
And so it was that Trevor Belmont, son of Gabriel and Marie Belmont, was taken from his mother's arms as a baby and raised in secret by the Brotherhood of Light. The secret Marie would take to her grave, Gabriel never knowing that he had a son by her. Although Gabriel later defeated the dread Lords of Shadow, Gabriel fell into darkness as foretold, becoming Dracula. Now atop his colossal mountain fortress, he delivers his war upon the Brotherhood and mankind. Trevor grew to manhood, oblivious of his true lineage and had a son of his own, Simon Belmont. Our tale begins here, many years later, for it is through the son of Trevor Belmont that the deeds and courage of the father can be revealed and the tragic fate of the Belmont clan laid bare. Here we are, Simon Belmont, Barbarian of the, of the, of the Mountains. <laughs> okay, so, what did we see? Ah, we have the inventory. Simon lost both of his parents when he was young. His father went to Dracula's castle and never returned, and his mother died, protecting him from Dracula's wrath and fury unleashed upon the Brotherhood Fortress that protected his village. Lost and alone, he was found by the mountain tribes of Wallachia, and raised as one of them. Having reached maturity, this fearsome barbarian, the son of Trevor Belmont, is finally ready to avenge his family and destroy the rule of the dragon. Forever. Well, you have to wonder though, what chance does Simon Belmont have? <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, I do like his, uh, his artwork and the f his artwork face over there. He look, does look badass, and I have to say I do quite like the... Uh, his design, but his father got impaled through the through the gut by the tail of that creature and didn't even flinch. His father was superhuman before he died and became what he is right now. What can you do with a, a leather whip? Simon's whip is made from various animal skins interlocked, forming a tightly woven pattern. It is often used by the tribesmen of Wallachia. The leather is then reinforced with fragments of metal which maintain its flexibility because it is strong enough to grip through armor, wood, and flesh with ease. Ah, uh, here we have the, um, our moves, but we all know about these. Okay, so, here we begin. Top right, we have the map. Here we have our tr trust, trusty horsey. I do have to say that I quite enjoy the uh, stylized cartoony, or comic book style, you could say, cutscenes of the game. Makes me wish that the game itself was like this, instead of uh, this fully polygonal thing. The difference in art styles clash, and ah, here we have our first enemies, damn zombies. Oh, you don't even flinch, you little fucker. Ah, and here we have it, experience. We have a new mechanic here, level. Sorry, but I um, haven't played... It's been a while since I finished the first game, and... Uh, <laughs> yeah. There was a block in the air, huh? Interesting, okay. Cannot double jump. Uh, Alright, so... Gabriel Belmont has become an undead monstrosity, has laid uh, claim... 
Ah, we all know what that is. He has laid, has laid claim to the, uh, the castle of the Bernhardt family and is probably using it as his own stronghold. The Brotherhood of Light, <laughs> in their infinite wisdom, sent Trevor Belmont, his own, Simon's, uh, sorry, Gabriel's own son, to fight with him. And that ended very well, indeed. Trevor is dead. And now it is uh, Simon's turn to take up the mantle try and stop his progenitor. It was the elderly, then the men, women and children, until there was not a single person left standing. Not long after, the tombstones began to move. Neither the hard oak wood nor the heavy stones of their graves could prevent the return of the dead to the world of the living. Ah, this is interesting. Finding uh, the scrolls of the dead knights now increases our health. Uh, sorry, the ex our experience levels. This is always good. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Gotta admit, I like uh, Simon Savagery. Here we have him. One of the classic items from Castlevania Mythos. The throwing Axe. Although I think it's a uh, wasted opportunity, even though the music is quite good, it's a wasted opportunity not to have Simon's theme remixed for this for this beginning stage. Mm. Can't even juggle these things and pop in the air. Alas, poor York, I know him well. Although this this guy's not yet a skeleton. Throwing uh, his head at us. But oh well. These barrels can be broken with my main weapon. Oh shit. I wouldn't have tried it if you haven't told me, game. Can I crouch? No, I can't. And who will have them? Hearts. Hearts, if you've been playing Castlevania games for the last decades, replenish your um well. Rather, they give you use of your secondary weapons. And here, we move on to the castle side of wall. Okay. Let's see, another dead knight, or rather... Hmm. As we crossed the bridge, the chain mechanism began to turn, quickly withdrawing the platform we were standing on. Luckily, I had the reflexes to jump back in time and watch as the rest of my company turned into the ab tumbled into the abyss. Well... That was an unfortunate end for them, brother, wasn't it? Here we, here we are. I really like how they tried to be more uh, faithful to Castlevania games with uh, Mirror of Fate. Not only is it side-scrolling, it is also a, well, metroidvania type game, just like, you know, Symphony of the Night tried to be, although with the combat system of uh, Lords of Shadow. It's uh, an interesting combination, and I think it does work. I like uh, that we're finally going into a castle, like, to fight Dracula, like we should in a Castlevania game. And of course, you couldn't live without a, uh, pushing uh, the block puzzle. Can I break these? Yes, I can. Okay, time to... What? Huh. See in the map down here there is no uh, on the, on the minimap over there there is no thick white line which means I can go down there at some point. Ah, you can also leave notes on the map. That's also good. 
These uh, quality of life upgrades to the classic Castlevania gaming are always, are always welcome. Okay, let's let's do it. Gonna set up. There we go. Over here. Leave a note. I'm gonna write. Um. Grapple point. All right, time to move on. Deeper and deeper. What say you, brother? I realized too late that I needed a combat cross to reach that platform. Ah, now with my back broken from the fall, all I can do is await death. My corpse will serve as a warning for others. Do not enter this evil place without the right equipment. Well, it's too late for Simon now, isn't it? Although I like how these uh, <laughs> these poor knights have the uh, not only the, the strength but also the presence of mind to write a scroll right before they die. And here we move on the uh, the cool coolness of caverns underneath the castle. Hello, you. The eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that this thing is ahead. Oh crap! Yeah, we can swim, of course. But may have noticed that that thing's face, head rather, is um, was quite obvious in the uh, title screen of the game. What do we have here? Ah, a new bestiary entry. Not bad at all. So yes, we have uh, swimming mechanics in this game. Find a little secret. Another dead knight. Desiccated. Centuries ago, pilgrims created this underground route to worship the spirit of a woman who it was claimed had the power of healing. The tunnels they traveled through seeking health and good fortune now seem to be the only access to the, into the castle. Well, secret access into the castle doesn't help you from a spear to the face. So, let's start swimming back. As you can imagine, that thing with the uh, strange head is going to be pivotal to the entire game. Otherwise, why would it be present, rather be featured, in the title screen of the game? Hmm? Anything else down here? No, just some oxygen. Don't need though. Can't imagine the strength it requires to swim through all, with all that gear and metal. All right. But I think this is where we'll stop for now. So, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time as we move on, move into the, these caves and find this, uh, perhaps we may find this spirit of the woman with the power of healing. Till then, thanks for watching. Do like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Till then, take care.